Let's look at the major difference between ASME Y145 and ISO GPS, and it has to do with size tolerance. So here we have a diameter of 10 shaft, plus or minus 0.1. Now ASME states that we have two worst cases here, a 10.1 maximum material condition, and a 9.9 .9 least material condition. So how do we make sure the shaft isn't too big and it's gonna fit into a hole? Well, we use a go gauge. We call that a mating envelope. And the pin cannot get any bigger than the 10.1 mating envelope built at MMC. But how do we know that each cross section isn't too small? Well, then we have a local size requirement no smaller than 9.9 .9 LMC. So we could verify that with calipers to make sure each local cross section is no smaller than 9.9. .9. Now, what if we didn't want the mating envelope? I don't really care if it fits into a hole, we just care about the cross sections have to be between 10.1 to 9.9. .9. Well, in ASME, we can use I in a circle, which stands for independency. And this states that size and form requirements are now independent. So remember how we had a mating envelope in local size? This gets rid of the mating envelope. So now your size is gonna be local size calipers 9.9 .9 to 10.1 only. Now do be aware that this part could now look like a pretzel, a little wet noodle, as long as each local size is still controlled to the size limits. Notice that the form is no longer controlled at all, so you need to have some other control that would limit how much form variation you could have, or it could look like anything. Now why I'm mentioning this is this is actually the default in ISO standards. ISO principle of independency is the default for size. So we have to go to ISO 8015-2011, which states the independency principle. By default, every GPS specification for a feature shall be fulfilled independent of other specifications. This means that size is fulfilled independent from the form. So in ISO, if you state 10 plus or minus 0.1, that's gonna be local size 9.9 .9 to 10.1. And that's when you have tolerancing per ISO 8015 on your drawing. Now, if you want this to fit into a hole, then you have to invoke the envelope principle. We do that by putting circle E next to your size talents, and that gives you that extra mating envelope requirement. So by adding 10 plus or minus 0.1 with the E, then you get something similar to what we have in ASME with a mating envelope and a local size. Two requirements, size for local and then additional mating envelope. Now, another option that we can do on the corner of your drawings in the title block we can add a global requirement for all features of size on the drawing. And you write size ISO 14405 circle E. 14405 is the standard doing with size tolerance, and they have a way that you can add this note to your title block, which is a global requirement of envelope principle on all your holes, shafts, slots, and tabs. And if you do that, you can make it the same as our ASME Y145. So let's go to an example here. We have a pin and a hole. And we look to see our worst cases, 874 is our shaft, and 875 is our hole. So there is a little bit of clearance here. So if we gave the blue part to supplier A, and we gave the red part to supplier B, can you guarantee them to fit? It depends what standard you're working to. So if your drawing says interpret per ASME Y145, and then you give the year, it doesn't really matter which year, 2018 will say, yes, they're guaranteed to fit together because we require perfect form at MMC and perfect form at MMC. So you're guaranteed a one thou clearance between them. But what if this drawing says, no, I want this interpreted per ISO 8015, are they guaranteed to fit together? Not necessarily because we're not requiring perfect form by default. So if you want to guarantee the fit between the two pieces, how would you get them to go together? You got to circle E them. So we have to add a circle E to this. This is invoking perfect form at MMC. And you circle E on this one, invoking perfect form at MMC. So without that, this could look like a little wet noodle and a little wet noodle hole, and they might not always fit. So getting that envelope requirement is important for features of size to fit. ASME took the approach of what's our default they thought it should be the most common thing should be the default. And that's what they set envelope requirement as the default condition. And then you can use independency to get it off. ISO took a different approach. They thought the most basic thing should be the default. And then you add requirements as you need them. So ISO, you might see a lot of circle E's on your drawing, and that's gonna make sure that the pins and holes will fit together. Now ISO does have a little bit more that you can go into with size. So here we have 10 plus or minus 0.1, and we know the default there is gonna be local 2.9.9 .9 to 10.1. 
but ISO has a lot of extra modifiers that you can add here if you'd like. So there are over 20 possible here that you can even combine with each other to create different specifications if you want. But if you put oval GG there, that actually invokes a least squares requirement. So that means the global least squares, the best fit least square cylinder is put to your shaft and that has to be between 9.9 .9 and 10.1. You can even combine them here so we have a GG least squares combined with ACS which stands for any cross section. So at any cross section the least squares circle has to be between 9.9 .9 and 10.1. So you could actually have two, a global least squares and then underneath have a local least squares. So do circle least squares to a tighter requirement and a global least squares to a looser requirement. So ISO has a lot more versatility in defining what size is but you have a lot of modifiers and most of them you probably never want to use but they do have a lot more options. So it is a more advanced system I would say ISO standards but not as user friendly because of all the different options you could end up picking.